I have my comp day off from work today and I decided to just kind of stay home this particular time instead of going up to Atlanta like I typically do once I have my comp days in the middle of the week once every three weeks since we have our family Christmas planned at the very end of the month. Um, so I have taken this day that I have all to myself and have decided that I'm going to do my own little bookshelf tour thing that I've kind of wanted to do for a while but have really decided on the best time to do it and I kind of feel like end slash beginning of the year is like the best time to do it and you can be in the video. So yeah, now that it's kind of December and hopefully I'll be finished with getting my own books for this year, though I keep saying that and then I keep getting more books. <laughs> um, I figure this is a good place to start, so fine, go. <laughs> so uh, from what I have last checked, I have around 250 books right now. Um, and I have it spread across like three bookshelves. Um, technically we have four in total. One is actually mostly Ed's stuff, especially now that we've gotten, a, sorry, getting a bunch of his books that he left behind in Puerto Rico from his mom, um, including a new box of them that just came in yesterday or the day before and I haven't even unboxed them yet. And the bookshelf is already full and we don't have enough space for everything as it is. So we'll already be picking up a fifth bookshelf when we go for Christmas. Um, so I'm going to be basically viewing all four bookshelves that we have, doing my stuff and everything, kind of glancing over the last one since most of it is kind of cookbooks and stuff as well. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's the thing that we're doing and Luna is sniffing my camera. Yeah, um, this is already going to be taking a quick minute to do, um, so might as well kind of get started into it and just kind of go in through the shields. A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell, The Princess Bride by William Goldman, Shopaholic Takes Manhattan by Sophie Kinsella, How Not to Spend Your Senior Year by Cameron Doki, Major Crush by Jennifer Eccles, Love Undercover, A Novel Idea by Amy Friedman, Getting to Third Date, which is by Kelly McClymer, The Last Song by Nicholas Sparks, The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks, A Walk to Remember by Nicholas Sparks, He is With Me, which is by Tomorrow Summers, Advice Day and the sequel Where She Went by Gail Foreman, The To All the Boys I've Loved Before series, Every Day by David, David Levithan, The Me Before You series, that comprises of Me Before You, After You, and Still Me, The Lucky One, Safe Haven, The Dolls by Kiki Sullivan, The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzak, Simon and the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Abortali, If You Find This Letter by Hannah Brencher, Remember by Eileen Cook, The 13 Little Blue Envelopes and The Last Little Blue Envelope, both by Maureen Johnson, Confessions of a Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella, Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, Sarah's Key, which is by Tatiana Durazne, The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold, All of My Bibles Together, I have both English and French, for both the original Old New Testament and everything, um, and then the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, the Devil Wears Prada trilogy by Lauren Weisberger, Coffee at Luke's and Unauthorized Como Girl Scab Fest by Jennifer Cruzy, The Imaginary World of Blank by Carrie Smith, Doctor Who, Aliens and Enemies um, from BBC Books, Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein, The House of Night Books, Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll, The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Between this stack and these three here, I have my Twilight Saga collection, which is both in English and French. The Host by Stephanie Meyer. The Current by Tim, Johnst Tim Johnston. The Divergent uh, trilogy and spinoff. So we have Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant, and Four, all by Veronica Roth. The Hunger Games trilogy, which comprises of Hunger Games, Catching Fire, Mocking Jay, all by Suzanne Collins. The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings being an all-in-one series there. The Eleven Thumps series by Obert Skye. Eleven Thumps and the Gateway to Foo, 
The Whispered Secret, The Eyes of the Wants, The Wrath of Ezra, and The Ruins of Alder, with the spinoff being this tiny little book here, which is uh, Professor Winsnicker's Book of Proper Etiquette for Well-Mannered Sycophants, my all-in-one copy of The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, The Vampire Diaries by L.J. Smith, Book 1 and 2, which is here, which is The Awakening and the Struggle, and then Books 3 and 4, which is The Fury and Dark Reunion. The Nanny Diaries by Emma McLaughlin and Nicola Krauss. Our Revolution by Bernie Sanders. The Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them uh, screenplay, as well as The Crimes of Grindelwald screenplay. Paris par Arrondissement, Le Tour du Monde en 80 jours. Around the World in 80 Days um, by Jules Verne, The uh, Little Prince, Le Petit Prince, by Antoine de Saint-Sixbury. Uh, I think I said that right, I'm not sure. Le Fauteuillante by Gaston Rue, Les Vacances de Petit Nicolas uh, by, let's see, there's a couple of uh, authors Jean Jacques Sempé and Rene Goscinny. La Tour des Anges by Philip Pullman is actually a French copy of the His Dark Materials books. Um, this is actually book two. Um, let's see. I think it's The Subtle Knife is the one that it matches up with. My full set of Harry Potter books in French. It is kind of hodgepodge together. Harry Potter à l'école des sorcières, which is Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, Harry Potter à la, et la Chambre de Secret, which is Chamber of Secrets, Prisonier d'Azkaban, which is Prisoner of Azkaban, Coupe de Feu, which is um, Cobble of Fire, L'Ordre du Phoenix, which is Order of the Phoenix, Le Prince de Sanglé, which is Half Blood Prince, and Les Reliques de la Mort, which is The Deathly Hallows. The Moguls and Magic, um, which is by George Beam, the unauthorized biography of J.K. Rowling, The Wizard Behind Harry Potter by Mark Shapiro, The Magical Worlds of Harry Potter by David Colbert, Quidditch Through the Ages by Kenilworthy Wisp. This is a copy of the December 2000 edition of Reader's Digest, which had a special um, article about J.K. Rowling and the upcoming premiere for the Sorcerer's Stone movie. So my English version of the Harry Potter books, the original covers from Scholastic. Um, these are all my own copies that I grew up with over the years as I read through the series The Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt's Commander. Tales of Beale the Bard by J.K. Rowling as well. The Cursed Child Parts 1 and 2 by J.K. Rowling, John Tiffany, and Jack Thorne. Exploring Harry Potter by the Beecham Source Books uh, series there and it is by Elizabeth D. Schaefer. Journey Under the Sea by R.A. Montgomery, Yes Please by Amy Poehler, What Dreams May Come by Richard Matheson, Charlie St. Cloud by Ben Sherwood, A Stranger is Watching by Mary Higgins Clark, Pay It Forward by Catherine Ryan Hyde, Dead on Arrival by Matt Richtel, The uh, Robert Langdon series by Dan Brown, Red Sparrow by Jason Matthews, The Bourne series, Jason Bourne, um, by Robert Ludlum and uh, continued on by Eric Van Lusbader, The Little Vampire Women, um, and this is by Louisa May Alcott and Lynn Messina, The Book of Awesome by Neil Peshri Peshrika, I don't think I'm saying that right, but anyway. 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher, it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, The Tim a Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Nifnegger, What's Left of Me, World War Z by Max Brooks, The Circle by Dave Eggers, The Pretty Little Liars series, 
I've got Pretty Little Liars, Flawless, Perfect, Unbelievable, Wicked, Killer, and Heartless. Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruens. Nerve by Jeannie Ryan. Just Like Heaven by Mark Levy. It's per the Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chopsky. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series by Douglas Adams. On the same topic of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I also have this copy of And Another Thing by A1 Coff Colfer. The Jurassic Park Duology by Michael Crichton. Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell and Alexandra Ripley. Price of Paradise by from the Doctor Who New Ad Series Adventures by BBC Books. Is the Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. No Vie de Princesse, which means our princess lives. It's my two Barnes and Noble collectible editions of Doctor Who books that actually were given to me by Alex for my birthday last year. Um, and the first one is Remembrance of the Daleks by Ben Aronovich and Prisoner of the Daleks by Trevor Beckinsale. And then the second one I have here is The Silent Stars Go By and Touched by an Angel. Um, I don't recall the authors of the series, those two books. The three absolute monsters, North and South, The Love and War, and Heaven and Hell. But before I get into that top shelf, I'm actually going through the books that are up here that I have not found a space for. Severance by Ling Ma and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Julie and Julia by Julie Powell. Staying Strong 365 Days a Year by Demi Lovato. Just Don't Fall by Josh Sundquist. C'est la vie by Susie Gershman. Tales to Cat Tales Tell by Elaine B. Sanders, who is actually um, my stepfather's previous wife. Um, basically, she published a whole bunch of copies of this book, um, and they were they were just littered around our house when we moved in. Um, basically, it is a few essays about various cats that they've had over the years, because they did have a cat shelter through the house where they have um, taken care of and. Um, fostered over like 300 cats I think over the years um, and when we ended up moving in back in like 2005 they still had about 12 cats left um, so some of the cats that are listed in here I actually grew up with during the last few years that they were around some of them were long gone by the time I knew them uh, so I keep an extra copy because it is definitely interesting to see where some of those cats that I grew up with the first couple years that we were living in Marietta like what they were like as kittens because they were all about 12 to 15 years old by the time that we moved in and knew them. So these are some of the cats that I actually knew most particularly Boogie here on the bottom who was called Boogie because of the little black spot on her nose and she had a brother who looked almost identical but without the black spot his name was Dudley and Boogie was super cuddly she loved kids and was definitely very friendly but Dudley was literally scared of his own shadow and I think he ended up surprisingly being one of the last two cats that stuck around with us. Um, unfortunately there was a time when about half a dozen of the cats disappeared overnight due to coyotes um, and Dudley was one of them but about two weeks to a month later he randomly showed up back at the house and we were just absolutely floored that he was the cat that ended up coming back because he literally was just petrified of everything. Um, another one that I was familiar with was the little ginger one there on the right, which his name is George. Uh, he was also one of the older ones and was definitely having some health issues when we moved in, but he was also a complete scaredy cat, terrified of his own shadow. The moment you even so much as thought of him, he would run away. <laughs> um, he did get a little bit more um, brave and let us pet him and take care of him in his last couple of years there and unfortunately I did end up seeing his last breath. He did not go smoothly but it was definitely his time and I definitely appreciated getting to know him over the years. Um, and then this tiny little one here, Opal, is a little brown tabby and she was just crazy she used to sleep on top of the little foul cabinet by jack's desk a lot but she i swear had like the strongest skull in the world she would literally 
she would literally go and I don't know how she did this. You would be in the bathroom with the door locked and somehow she would headbutt the door so hard and just the right way that she would open the door through the lock. And I don't know how she managed it, but she did that all the time. You could not keep her out. She just, she just insisted on cuddling with you whenever she wanted. And it was adorable, but sometimes it was like, oh my God, uh, I locked the door to keep you out. <laughs> And then there's a few others, but I don't think we had any of the others in this picture, little set of pictures by the time I moved in there. Love and First Sight, also by Josh Sundquist. The Vow by Kim and Cricket Carpenter. Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. We Should Hang Out Sometime by Josh Sundquist. The Peaceful Warrior Collection by Dan Millman. A Beautiful Mind by Sylvia Ness. Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard. The Lucky Man by Michael J. Fox. Life's a Witch by Brittany Gergot. Will I a Witch by Brittany Garagodalis. Escaping from Houdini by Carrie Maniscalco. The White Oleander by Janet Fitch. The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. An, an Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Paris by Edward Rutherford. Mindwalker. The Other Me by Saskia Sargenson. The Confectioner's Tale, which is by Laura Madeline. And then here in the corner, I'm not really gonna mess around, but I've got just a few of my uh, dictionaries and the sources and um, translation books. Uh, so I've got my French English Dictionary, Harbrace Handbook uh, for Writing, the French and English College Dictionary, and Dictionary and Thesaurus. So starting on the left hand side, we have all of my, get out of here. I've got all of my journals based all the way back to my, my very first one. We have the first one, which was given to me by Nikki, which is Princess Wishes, and it has a lot of glitter and like a fur cover on it. And of course, it's just, I was like eight and it's from Claire's, so of course. That's just a random empty notebook there on the end. And then this was the first journal that I picked out for myself, which was just randomly from Walmart. Um, and I think I got it like right at New Year's of 2007. Um, and it took me a while to get through because it is a little bit bigger than the others. Um, and I put these little emoticon stickers. I don't even know where I got them from on there. Next, uh, by the time I finished going through that one, because it took years and years, I wasn't sure where I was gonna get my next journal. I was super picky. So then I finally came across this absolute gem on the internet somewhere random um and i thought at first it was going to be like kind of a cheap little book like a little paperback or something and then i got it and it is just beautiful it has a lot of glitter across the front and it's got a magnetic cover and it opens up in kind of the center there so i fell in love with it the moment i i got it <laughs> And then I got this one from Barnes & Noble, which is just a generic journal with a bunch of sayings on it that deals with journaling, like quotes, regrets, brainstorms, interpretations, etc, etc, etc. And that one was also a fun one to go through because after I found that Paris one, I was not sure what I was going to do. I was like, I'm never going to love one as much as I love this one, which is kind of true. But anyway. Oh no. I can't get up here. falling to the back and then I have this one which is keep calm I'm the doctor on it um, and I actually got this from Lisa for my birthday in 2014 this was actually the journal that I started using for journal prompts to try and get into actually writing every day or at least on a regular basis because I was so terrible with the first three journals that I would just go months if not like almost like years without writing sometimes and just would have to go through and like write different notes to kind of make up for the missed time. Um, so I started doing journal prompts in, uh, I think I finally ended up using this last year. So yes, I started using this. This actually started the New Year's of 2017 and I used it alongside the black one um, f to catch up with like general goings on in the interim because it was so far behind from like 2014. Uh, so this kind of crosses over with the other, but I definitely appreciate it because I have thankfully managed to 
keep up with like a daily-ish journal ever since I did this prompt last year and it was my new year's resolution to try and write in my journal more often and thank god I have managed to do it <laughs> And then this one was a Walmart find where I just thought it was very pretty where it had the ink pen on the front and has the golden edges which I absolutely love on books um, when it has the like gilded pages or however you want to call them and so that was the last journal that I had there and let's see here Just to kind of round out the journal collection, this is my current journal that I am using, which also has the golden gilded-ish pages, which are more rose gold. But I absolutely fell in love with this journal when I found it at Second and Charles, right about my birthday. Oh my god, everything is falling out. <laughs> uh, I found it around my birthday at Second and Charles, I think last year, um, 2017, and I just I couldn't pass it by. I just had to do it. <laughs> Cinder by Marissa Meyer, As Old as Time by Liz Braswell, Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis, Lost in a Book, Peter Jackson and the Olympians, book one, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Unfortunately, this somehow fell to the back at some point. As You Wish by Carrie Elwes, another book of the month choice, This Star Won't Go Out by Esther Earle, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, The Five People You Meet in Heaven and The Next Person You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Albom, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and Six Other Stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald, this A Little Princess by Frances Hodgen Burnett, This Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in French, which is Aventure d'Alice au Pays de, de Mabey, I think. It's Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda, it's Where the Heart Is, it's One Day by David Nichols, My Sister's Keeper by Jody Peacold, Street Rise French, which is a dictionary slash thesaurus for French slang and idioms, French for Le Snob, Know Your Cat, which is by Bruce Fogel, the illustrated copies of Harry Potter and The Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, and Prisoner of Azkaban. The last thing on the shelf here that we have is just my photo album, which is, of course, French themed as well, with a lot of French sayings and watercolors and such on it. For this last shelf, I'm not really gonna go too far into on this third bookcase here. Um, this is primarily my crazy shelf. Um, so I've got my French textbooks that I took home from school when they were getting rid of them, as well as from Goodwill Finds and Library Sale there. Um, so I've got pretty much a whole slew of them there. I have got the French and English Power Glide here somewhere. I don't know where my French one is. I thought it was over here. Where is it? It might be like hidden out somewhere in my room or something. Because I think I just have like the book itself for the French one. But it's lost. No. Anyway, so I've got the Spanish uh, Power Glide here. I have all of my yearbooks from over the years as well, and uh, coloring books, uh, the Twilight and New Moon Illustrated Movie Companions. I've got my AP French uh, textbook in here. I've got my Dragon Con booklets from when I went there, some random magazines that are Harry Potter centric. Um, I've got the Dance Festival, uh, Temple Celebration for Atlanta, the Southern Lights uh, Festival booklet that Brother Hamor put out um, and published there through Blurb. I've got my French scrap, I'm sorry, my senior year scrapbook that I also put through Shutterfly. Uh, and I've got that in there as well. And some more photo albums, baby book, things like that. Just a whole bunch of crazy. And so that's what we have there. So real quickly, there is the fourth bookcase here. I'm just kind of kind of glancing through it because this is mostly Ed's books. I don't really have any of my books on here other than the craziness on the bottom. So top shelf here, we have Hunger Games trilogy, I Am Number Four trilogy, Pathfinder, the 
his Dark Materials trilogy between the Compass, Subtle Knife, and the Amber Glass. We have the City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, all by Cassandra Clare. Um, I am planning to read those at some point um, since we, he already had the books there. Um, though the City of all Fallen Angels is an ad that I got from the library sale. Um, and then we have Witch and Wizard by James Patterson. Um, got The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And we've got the majority of the Harry Potter series that I was getting him um, in touch with when we were trying to get him to read the books. He did finish the first one, but that's about as far as we've gotten so far. And the only one that's missing uh, is the Half-Blood Prince. It's the only one we didn't end up getting to, but now it's probably never going to be taken advantage of because now we have almost two full sets of the books. Three if you count my French ones. So anyway. And then we have Mythology by Edith Hamilton and The Never-Ending Story. And that's another one I'm going to have to steal. And then the middle shelf here is mostly a bunch of like video games and magic books and the like. Um, but then we have keyboard books and everything there. Um, Breaking Dawn and then the Game of Thrones series and whatever this manga is. <laughs> uh, Card Captor Sakura. I don't know. I don't read manga. It's not me. So anyway. And then down, of course, at the bottom at the very last shelf here that we have is just a whole bunch of crazy as well, but it's mostly cooking related and just random notebooks I have, like this is all of our vet stuff um, and just generally from there. So recipes and the whatnots and his workbooks for Cisco. So yeah, that about completes it. So yeah, it took quite a while to get here and I'm not sure how much of this I'm actually going to be keeping in because I did do a lot of kind of uh, background on a lot of my books with this, but I wasn't really sure how I wanted to go with my first bookshelf tour and then it just kind of all came spilling out. So um, depending on how I choose to go about editing this, I may kind of trim down how much I say or just cut it down to just the titles and the authors. I'm not really sure. But anyway, um, it has been a fun time going through all of my books. And yeah, it's been an afternoon, honestly, like, God, it's already 4.30. I've been at this for like four hours. Y'all, this is crazy. I really gotta go. I haven't eaten like literally anything all day. I literally woke up at like 10 o'clock and did this. And I need food. And then everything fell in comparison. Oh no, what happened? What did you do? Oh, it's because my, my phone's dead. And right, we'll come back to the phone then.